Hey, our own Rabinowitz here for School of Motion. Today, Maxon released new versions of Cinema 4D and Redshift, and they're full of cool new features. And one of my favorites is the new Redshift Flake Shader. It's designed for creating beautiful car materials, but it actually has a lot of interesting and unexpected applications, like creating an infinite number of terrazzo materials, for example. So in this video, I'll walk you through how it works, and I'll explore some use cases. So here I am in Cinema 4D with a really simple setup, and it's just a sphere right now. I'm going to add in a light. Uh, I'm going to add in a flat dome light, nice and white. It creates very flat lighting that's totally fine for the next little bit. And I'm going to create a new material. And I'm going to double click on this material and bring up the node editor. Let me also apply this material to the sphere just like that. And now I'm in the node editor. And by the way, one of my favorite new features is that if you click right here, show attributes, we can actually work on the attributes of the material right inside of the node editor, which is up until now been a kind of a pain because you've had to jump out of it. You'd select the material and then you'd have to do it over here. So this lets me work on it right here like this. And this makes it a lot easier to work. So with that done, I'm going to click on this plus and I'm going to type in the word flakes or flake and I'm going to drop the new flakes shader right in here. And I'm going to, this is not the normal way to use it, but I'm going to drop the out normal onto the color. And I'm doing this because I want to look at it over here and we can see what's happening very clearly because of the white light that's perfectly even all around. Let me bring up the scale a bit and then get in really tight. And what you can see is that there is various shades of, you know, red, green, and blue. Kind of some of them are mixed together. Some of them are just darker and some are lighter. There's black spots. And this is going to be used as a bump map that kind of tilts your material in different directions so that the light catches differently when you have the flake shader applied to it and you're using it in the bump map. And we'll see that in a few moments. I just wanted you to see that one. Now, also, there's an out alpha option. And if we select that right there, put it over there into the color, we're going to see that there are some flakes that will be made transparent like the black ones and some that will be made opaque like the white ones. And so this is another kind of feature of this that you can use it to combine with other features in the flake shader to create different kinds of effects. And finally, there's the out flakes ID. And this one is great because this one is gives us a black and white map that can be used for uh, any number of things. And uh, there's so many options and so many ways to play with it. And we'll look at maybe one or two of those in a little bit. But this is basically how this works. There's also the outflakes blend thing here. And if I click on it, it's going to look white for now. This has to do with distance and how it handles uh, showing the flakes from a distance. And we're not going to touch that in this one, but I will show you an example of the distance in play. So you'll have to work with this if you want to control that a little more. Okay, let's leave the flake shader alone for now. And I'm just going to minimize this for a moment. I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to select my dome light and then I'm going to go into my asset browser right here. And you can get to that by clicking on this. It'll show up probably on the side for you, but I've got it set up on the bottom. And I'm going to go into the HDRIs, and you can select media, or you can just navigate all the way there. But you go to HDRIs under Legacy, there's this great two light setup that's going to really help us in seeing the effect that the material has on the object. So let me just drag it into the texture for that dome light. And now if we pull back, we can see we've got this nice light. I'm going to turn off the background so we don't see the light there like this. And I'm just going to bring us back to a cool place. I don't know, find something that looks good. So now let's just jump in and start doing some cool material stuff. Let me double click on this material and I'm going to select the Redshift standard material and I'm going to change the color of the material to a kind of a gunmetal sort of blue or something like that. And then I'm going to change the reflection color to something like pink or purple, something like that. Again, you'll find colors that work for you in your version, but this is where I'm going to go with. And I'm going to change the roughness to 0.3, just to spread out the blur a little more of that, that roughness of the reflection. I mean, it can go higher, but I think that that's, I just wanted it slightly more. Okay, next I'm going to take the out normal right here, and I'm going to drive that right into the bump map over here. And what we can see, if we take a look here, take this out. Let's get in nice and tight. And you know, what's happening is that the reason it's being bumped in like some are dark and some are light and some are reflecting light and some are not is because like I said before, these colors are driving sort of almost like the rotation of the surface. It's like pushing the surface in a different direction. So instead of pointing straight up and, and higher or lower, now some of the geometry is facing to the X and some of it's facing to the Y. And we create this really nice look. And I'm also going to just lower the size overall of this shader. So let me go back to the scale here and set it to 0.1. And 
That's looking pretty, pretty sweet. But we're missing kind of like the sheen that you might see on like a really nice uh, car material, right? So what it will do is we'll jump back into the main material right here. And in fact, I'm going to do this out here just so that we can see. And we'll go down to the area called Coat. And I'm going to set the, if I turn it up all the way, we get a really nice bright reflection. See that? We can see everything very clearly. I don't want it quite that bright. So we'll set it to point three maybe. And that's looking better. And I'm also going to set the roughness up. Let me set it to 0.5 first. That really roughens it out. It's not where really I wanted to go. So let me bring this to 0.1. Just a little bit of rough. Now we pull back and we have this really, really sweet material here. And you can see the little details of it right there. And one thing I notice is that when I pull far away, I can still really see a lot of that detail. And maybe you don't want to see that when you pull far away. You know, on, on certain materials, when you get close, the details really come out. But far away, we should maybe not be seeing those quite the same. So there is a setting, if I come back into the material here, and there is a setting right here. And what this does right here, if we go to distance behavior, is this controls how far away we start to see the little speckles of the material. So if I set this down to one, right, and then I set this blend maximum to, let's say, to 20, and we take a look here, you can see that from far away, we're not seeing that speckles at all. I get closer, and they start to appear. Right? So if I want to play with that, I can. I mean, obviously, that, that's a very sharp transition between seeing it and not seeing it. So you might go with something higher like 200, and then we pull back further, and it sort of starts to fade off. The default numbers are fine for a lot of things, but I find that if you want to get to fine looking materials, you're going to want to play with this number for the blend minimum and the blend maximum. Let me just set that back to the defaults. And I think that's looking really nice as a material. If we want, we can give it some dimension to this sphere so we can really see how this material is playing off of it. What I'll do is I'll just add in a displacer and I'll drop that onto the sphere. And then in the displacer, I'll go to the shader section right here. I'll choose noise for how it's being displaced. And you can make changes to the settings as you feel you want to, but I just kind of wanted to see what this looks like with some more dimensionality uh, to it. And that's looking really cool. Something I noticed between these different recordings that I was making, I caught that if I use subsurface scattering, the flake shader looks pretty cool too. So let me just show you quickly. I'm just going to scroll down into the uh, subsurface section right here where it's got like everything set to white. So what we'll do is this. First, we're going to set the weight of the subsurface all the way up to one, which uh, makes it white, lights passing through. Um, and we're going to bring the anastropy up almost all the way, but not quite. So maybe like to the 9.9, .9, something like that. And let's just set the, the color here to blue. And this one as well, that's a little, maybe a little more towards that, like that. And we'll do the same right here. And we'll set the scale up to two as well to let more of the light in. And it's gonna take a while to render, but you'll see it looks pretty nice. Yeah, that's looking pretty awesome. Now I'm going to reuse this material slightly to just do another example. So let me just pull out here and I'm going to hide the sphere. Don't need that. And let me search right here in my asset browser for holiday. And I have to change it from media to models because I'm looking for these little ornaments and I'm going to double click. I'm going to bring in one of the ornaments right here. It's super tiny. I, I could scale into it, but I'll just scale it up. I'll, I could zoom in, but I'll scale up in this particular case. Get it big, bring it over here. We're not really seeing it. The material and the light's not really working very well together, but that's okay. I'm going to take this material and I'm going to add it to the ornament. Let's go into the ball area right here and just drop it right on that red material. And this is interesting, but it doesn't look like an ornament quite yet. So what can we do? Well, let's bring open the material editor right here. I'm going to the note editor here and I can make changes. Let's try first of all, the scale I feel is a bit too small. So why don't we set it to 0.2 and see what that looks like. I mean, that feels a little bit better. Uh, obviously we should go into the colors for the material, maybe change that to red and get it more of a like that and uh, change this reflective color to more of like a yellow orange something like that and that's already looking a little bit better but that sheen is all wrong that really shouldn't be there so let me go down a little lower here and we can turn the weight of our coat this little coat that we have on there let's bring that down to zero 
and maybe just maybe make this slightly bigger, 0 0.3. And yeah, we got really close. I mean, I feel like that looks a lot more like a kind of Christmas ornament you might see that's got like the, the glitter that you can feel it when you touch it as opposed to being some kind of glass ornament that has less texture on it. Now another interesting thing that we could do with this shader is to use it to create an interesting kind of terrazzo material for the floor. And if you're not familiar with terrazzo materials, these are the floor materials that look something like this. So let's take a look at how to do that. So I'm going to take the uh, outflakes ID and I'm going to drop them into the color. And what you can see is that our floor becomes this black and white pattern. So how do we change this to look more like what we want in terms of color? Well, we need to add in a gradient so or a ramp. So I'll type in our AMP here. I'll drop in a ramp. And I'm going to drive the outflakes ID into here. And I'm going to choose general input, alt input, which will control the way it uses the color. And then for out color, I'll put it to color. And then we can just look over here and look at this ramp color right here if we want to do that. And I'm going to just going to load a preset. Why don't we pick something? Um, let's go with uh, here. I like this one right here at the bottom. And again, we can pull in a little tighter to see this floor material, right? And that's, that's a lot. So what can we do to reduce some of that? Well, maybe select another color here and just choose the same as the green base. Maybe we want that as the base for the floor. And that starts to look a lot more of like what we want. We can go back to the material here. And if we go into the color and the ramp, and again, we go even over to here to the flakes, right? So which is using Voronoi. So we can obviously make a change of the scale. We can lower the density and lowering the density will lower the amount of these other colors other than the one that was on the left. And we start getting stuff that looks like that. Now we could also play with, instead of Voronoi, we can go with dots and we can have a dotted floor pattern if that's something that you want. And once we do that, once we set the dots here, we can actually change the size of the flakes. We could really lower this down. So make it super small, right? And we can also raise the density and kind of spatter it a little bit more. I'm gonna set that back to Voronoi and I'm just going to lower the density and maybe lower the scale a little bit. And I think that's pretty good. Now there's one last feature to which I haven't found the perfect use case for yet, but you have the ability to create depth within the shader. It's a little weird because it's not real depth. And so if you were trying to use it with glass and trying to create refractions from things inside of the glass, it wouldn't really work. But let me just show you what it is. So here I've got a flake shader uh, applied. Um, I'm using it for both the color. I'm using the colors from the flake shader for the color of the material and for the alpha channel, I'm using the out alpha. So we create these kind of like these dots. And if we rotate around, we can see that that there's a three dimensionality to it. There's like dots on the opposite side right there. Okay, well, what happens is that within that, there is this section called 3D flakes. And what you have to do is if you dial up the depth a bit and the step size as well, it starts to create some depth. So if we rotate around, let's get in tight here, we can see there's some parallax. Like look at this blue one right here as we rotate. So it feels like there's some depth to these little flecks. And like I said, it might be cool for a very basic glass effect, but it doesn't quite work with glass in terms of the depth. And if you're doing chromatic aberration and stuff, this stuff still appears right on the surface. It's like an effect, not an actual three-dimensional depth. But what's really cool about this is that there's an index of refraction. So if I set that to one and then I rotate, there is depth, but you don't get any of the bendy stuff. Um, if I set the index of refraction to one point, six which is like usually standard for glass All right watch the edges watch what happens on the edges as these things kind of go they sort of bend in they disappear a little bit but yeah that gives you an idea of what this is and we can try to increase the the density a little bit why don't i set that to something like 0.2 and we'll bring the depth up a little bit and we'll bring up the step size and we can lower the size of the flake so we can see a little more. And you can see that there's a lot of depth happening in there. And just so that you can see that it's actually an illusion and not actual depth, let me go back into the material here and I'm gonna take away this alpha 
I'm going to remove that. And what happens is that as we rotate, even though the sphere no longer has any alpha channel and it's completely opaque, we can still see the depth being faked there. Still, it probably has some pretty cool applications if you play around. Let me know if you come up with any good ideas. Before I sign off, you know, if you want to learn Cinema 4D, After Effects, and lots of other motion design -y kind of stuff, it's the perfect time because Spring 2023 registration is now open at schoolofmotion.com, so check it out. And if you want some fast, easy tips for creating cool motion design and VFX, stop by my YouTube channel and say hello. As always, I hope that this helps you in your work. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for School of Motion. See you soon.